it, there's more matching too, right? We got our yeah, matching shirt. Yeah, matching. Our yeah, matching, we matching shirt. Oh, I can't. Here, I gotta hold it. Science. science. Okay, okay. Oh, come with science. <laughs> Hello, Sobat Kokamuhi. Welcome to our podcast series where we talk about how to engage the community for a better earth. I'm Nikita, your host, who will guide you into this conversation. Um, today episode is so special for me because um the guests today play an important role when I'm making a uh, my community called Kokamuhi. Her name is Miss Sala. She is a teacher at she is a science teacher at Santa Fe Indian School in New Mexico. And in today's episode, we will talk about how to empower youth leadership. So let's welcome Misala. Hello, Misala. Hi, Nikita. How are you? I'm great. And I'm so happy that you are here today and have a discussion about leadership and about cafe science. And how about you? <laughs> Yeah, I'm very good. So, salam alaikum and Eid Umbarak to all of the people in your community. So, I know you guys all just had a big, big celebration for the Muslim community there. So, to to yeah. celebrate that, and I know that's you're still on the holiday there. Um, mm -hmm. so, yes, happy to be here. Um, I think it's Thursday here in New Mexico because I'm uh, calling in and in. Where Nikita is, I think it's Friday already, right? <laughs> yeah, so we have big different time zones. And yeah, through the virtual, we can meet together and discuss about mm -hmm. this positive thing. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so exactly. happy to see you again. Wonderful to so, see you too. Yeah, yeah. Um, let me share to our audience how we met and how I get involved in your cafe science. And I met you during the pandemic, and it was when I was 12th grade at uh, high school. And yeah, I feel bored, and i looking for the webinar, and then I uh, joined your Cafe Science webinar. It was about um, clouds, and the speaker was um, Dr. Marile. And mm -hmm. she talked about clouds, and yeah, I was so excited to hear that. And at the end of the at the end of the event, there are spin the wheel playing for uh for searching who got the door prize, who are the winner of the door prize. And at that time, I won <laughs> the door <laughs> prize, yay! And then yeah, I get your contact, and we uh, talk each other, and I share my interest. Um, I express my interest to join the cafe science, and you welcome me so well. And um, yeah, I get involved to cafe science, and I learn about from that. And what do you feel for being a adult leader of cafe science for a long time, Misala? Well, it's a wonderful extracurricular activity that I get to do with, you know, my students at the school I teach at. So I teach at the Santa Fe Indian School. It's in uh, mm -hmm. Santa Fe, New Mexico, um, in mm -hmm. the United States. And our school is special because it's, you know, the it's an owned and operated by the 19 Pueblos in New Mexico. Mm -hmm. And we've mm -hmm. been able to host the Cafe Scientifiques um, at our school. Prior to that, I actually took students, I would take them in a, in a suburban, in a car, and we'd drive down to another city where they were hosting them. And that was mm -hmm. prior to the pandemic. And we would attend the cafes there um, in a town called um, Española at one of their, at their university. So I was first kind of introduced to the cafe program through other cafes that were happening around um, our community. And we decided, why can't we have our own, right? Host our own yeah, cafe program and, and host it at our school because we have space. Um, our students live on campus. So we have like an, a very active audience that we can engage. 
And we also open it up to the rest of the community and obviously the global community because we yes. were able to reach you. So yeah. it's been a really <laughs> wonderful um, experience so far. Yes. And you mentioned about Pablo. Can you tell to our listener what is Pablo? And yeah, definitely. what is your experience uh, live in an area that uh, a lot of Pablos there? Yeah, no, for sure. So our Pueblo communities are our indigenous communities. There are Native American communities uh, that are spread throughout the entire uh, state of New Mexico. Um, there's 19 uh, federally recognized Pueblos in the state. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't get students from all of the Pueblos because, you know, some we just don't have enough uh, student students to attend that are from those communities because they're pretty far mm -hmm. or they're attending other schools um, that are closer to them. Um, but our Pueblo communities, you know, these um, uh, communities are indigenous to the, to the United States. These are the first peoples um, mm -hmm. of America, of the Americas. And mm -hmm. they have had these, um, you know, indigenous communities and they have these Pueblos. So Pueblos are, 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 um, kind of our communities that basically they've, you know, they s sustain them, they've stayed it. They're not nomadic, like some indigenous peoples moved around, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas Pueblo people really are from that kind of region in um, New Mexico. They find their roots um, there. And so mm -hmm. they, in those Pueblo communities, they have their indigenous languages. So there are many mm -hmm. different languages um, such mm -hmm. as Tewa and Karis and Toa, um, and we have, um, there's the Zuni Pueblo as well, and the Hopi tribe. Um, Hopi is actually more in Arizona, which is another state next to New Mexico, but all these communities have their indigenous languages that they're still trying to revive and practice um, along with a lot of their traditional cultural practices as well. Um, oh, so, you know, great. yeah, no, it's a great <laughs> school. You know, our school is um, a boarding school, so there's some history mm -hmm. behind boarding schools in the United mm -hmm. States, and not a good history, unfortunately. It's it's a sad mm -hmm. history where they would take our take the native students, put them in the schools, and try to get them to erase their culture, like get them mm -hmm. to just be English speakers, forget about their language, forget about their culture, um, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, you know, fortunately. It didn't work as well as the U.S. government wanted it to work. And mm -hmm. the Pueblo people maintained their culture. They maintained their language, mm -hmm. even though they were put in these boarding schools um, to try to erase that. Um, so our school now, even though it was a traditional boarding school, the mm -hmm. Pueblo um, leaders, they mm -hmm. uh, really require, they have the classes, like they have indigenous language classes mm -hmm. for our students mm -hmm. now. They have... Many of our teachers are native indigenous people. So they come mm -hmm. from our communities, right? And they're teaching mm -hmm. students, they're teaching them traditional art practices, mm -hmm. they're teaching them language. And then even in our own classes, in our curriculum, we are mm -hmm. required to use the core values and cultural values of our um, Pueblo communities, which are their global core values like respect, um, mm -hmm. right? humility, all of these core values, you know, student centered uh, core values that our um, school really embraces to um, teach our students. Yeah, that's wonderful to hear that yeah. uh, should in, in uh, indigenous people still maintain the, their culture, their language, and in your school, there are um, native language class and yeah a lot of cultural thing and is there any annual tradition or festival that you mm -hmm. celebrate uh, every year mm -hmm. there is uh, so in in um october you know there mm -hmm. was a um, national holiday it was called columbus mm -hmm. day so mm -hmm. you know i don't know if you know that history of columbus you know a spaniard mm -hmm. discovering mm -hmm. America. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And it was celebrated, you know, for a long, long time that this person, mm -hmm. this colonialist person uh, found America. And that's not true, right? Because there were native people mm -hmm. there, there were indigenous people there. 
So now we celebrate, instead of Columbus Day, we call mm -hmm. that day Indigenous Peoples Day. And so we have a big, Whoa. have a big celebration on our campus where our students dance, they sing, they cook food from their traditional communities. And we have a, just a big, big party to celebrate mm -hmm. um, the Indigenous peoples and to recognize that they were there first. And mm -hmm. even though, you know, America, unfortunately, is known for its colonial society, right, trying to colonize people, um, that the Native people survived, they maintained their language, they maintained their culture. And so we're mm -hmm. celebrating through this big celebration. And, you know, our students, um, you know, they come, they will wear their traditional clothes certain days. Mm -hmm. Like we'll have days like, hey, it's rock your mocks day, mocks, <laughs> moccasins. So there's a type of mm -hmm. a shoe that, mm -hmm. you know, the Pueblo communities or, you know, all indigenous peoples in, in the United States wear, mo like have moccasins. And so we encourage mm -hmm. the kids to wear their moccasins mm -hmm. whenever they want. You know, they don't even have to wear it just one day. They can dress traditional if they want any day. Um, mm -hmm. So we encourage them to wear their um, mm -hmm. traditional clothes whenever they feel comfortable wearing them. Or if it's a celebration or um, we're doing some kind of presentation. And we also encourage our students to um, to introduce themselves. So if they like mm -hmm. get up and have to do a presentation, like say they were mm -hmm. coming here, they would I would have said my name. Hi, I'm Miss Sala and I'm from the community of this, this, and this. And they would say it though in their native language. So they would mm -hmm. introduce themselves in their traditional languages, which is great. So yeah, wow. well, I say that you really encourage uh, people to just be yourself, believe in yourself. And Definitely. be who you are. <laughs> yes. And that's great thing that and that's great value how uh, we educate people to be their self. And mm -hmm. I have a question for you. Um, yes. when did you realize that educating others uh, is your patient? Or um oh, was, yeah, no, uh, it's... being yeah, was being educator always be your dream career? No, it was, it was not my, it was not what I thought I was going to do, you know, when I was mm -hmm. in high school. In high school, mm -hmm. I wanted to be an actress. I wanted to be on Whoa. the movie and I wanted to be, <laughs> so, you know, I had, I was, a, I was doing drama in high school. I was like in plays and mm -hmm. I would do theater. So I was like, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm going to be an actress. But then my mom, who's a doctor was like, really? Like, that's a great like, <laughs> maybe other passion but what what job do you do you want to do mm -hmm. that can support mm -hmm. you and so you know all through my life I'd always you know babysat children I've I'd always like really loved working with kids and I mm -hmm. I like first started babysitting I would I mm -hmm. made like this special bag and on mm -hmm. the bag it had in mm -hmm. the bag, it had like toys and activities. And I would always bring my bag with me whenever I'd babysit kids. And I'd be like, all right, today we're going to have, we're going to do this. And so I'd be planning what I wanted to do when I babysat the kids, mm -hmm. um, you know, cause it was pre cell phone. There was no cell phones. There was, yeah, there was TV, but most of the parents were like, no TV, you know, they don't want their kids just watching television when you're babysitting. So mm -hmm. Yeah. So it really wasn't then until college when I went to my uh, doing my undergraduate, like my first year, um, the school mm -hmm. I went to had um, a program and I saw it was a flyer just on a wall. And I was like, oh, they were asking for tutors and they needed tutors to teach um, migrant students. So migrant students were these were kids that were coming up from Mexico, Guatemala, Honduras, and they were coming all the way up to Minnesota, because that's where I was going mm -hmm. to school in the state of Minnesota, because Minnesota is a big farm country, like has lots of farmland. And so these families mm -hmm. would come up, their kids would be enrolled in the schools, and but mm -hmm. they were, they spoke Spanish. And so I spoke a little Spanish and mm -hmm. I was like, 
oh, that'd be cool. I can go and tutor kids in science and math because I was really passionate still about STEM fields. Like I all, mm -hmm. both my parents really pushed me to mm -hmm. do science fair projects, to do, you know, go to science camps. So mm -hmm. they always pushed me towards those STEM fields. Um, mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, well, I could help tutor them in their mathematics or their um, mm -hmm. science classes. And that's what really sparked. I was like, wow, I love teenagers. Teenagers are so fun. Like <laughs> super fun conversations with them. Um, so that's what really then I was like, wow, yeah, this is what I want to do. I want to work with youth and I want to work with youth in the STEM fields, in the science mm -hmm. fields. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah, good long to story hear short. That... <laughs> mm -hmm, yeah, <laughs> it's good to hear that you love um art and you still can uh what is it? you still can do something art because you are in Santa Fe, right? A lot of oh, yeah. cultural and art thing. Yeah, yeah it's it's remind me to uh, uh something that uh important in our life. In our life, we need to have three hobbies one for getting money one for mm -hmm. the creativity and one for how we can keep in good shape and uh what's uh the your hobby in making money is a teaching student in stem and then your hobby for creativity is art and the third one i think uh hiking your sport uh, your favorite sport? so i love hiking but, but actually yeah. i played so <laughs> i played soccer so football yeah. so i played i soccer in college um that mm -hmm. was the other reason I went to that college because I got to play mm -hmm. division three soccer there and that mm -hmm. that was another thing too I could coach I was a lot mm -hmm. of these kids liked soccer and that was a really like an important connection I could make with them because they loved soccer mm -hmm. or football and I was mm -hmm. like oh I do too like this is a beautiful sport so we had a connection mm -hmm. through the sport of soccer and I also coached I ended up getting my coaching license. And I still do. I still coach soccer. And I also coach swimming now because both of my own kids are big swimmers. So yeah, mm. athletics and sports has been a big part of my life too. Yeah. <laughs> That's wonderful to hear. Yeah. You have been coached for a lot of things. And do you have any meaningful, really meaningful, the best meaningful experience of being teacher in your whole life? I think the meaningful experiences is that when I get to um, travel with students, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. like when I've taken kids abroad, I've taken them to mm -hmm. other countries, um, mm -hmm. or I just take them on field trips, just a, a field trip up into the mountains, and we get mm -hmm. to go hiking, we get to experience nature together, mm -hmm. or, you know, if I'll take a student um, to go do pick up, we pick up trash in our mm -hmm. watershed in the river system in Santa Fe. And just those mm -hmm. experiences where you get to see students outside the classroom, right? You're not just, you know, you know, like teaching a class, you're out in the community, you're out mm -hmm. experiencing, you're in nature, or you're mm -hmm. going to another you know, new place with this student and you, you get mm -hmm. to see their eyes just like light up because mm -hmm. they've never been to that location or they've never seen something like that. And mm -hmm. to know that you, you know, you facilitated that you were able to make that happen for them, mm -hmm. um, I think is the most rewarding thing for a teacher is to know that you, um, have helped inspire them to see and, and learn new things just mm -hmm. not within the classroom, but outside the classroom as yeah. well. And that's why that's cafe really, is so great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really great that you think about how to make the tangible impact by exploring nature and doing mm -hmm. things in the outside rather than do a lot of things in class just for theoretical thing. And we do more practice. Yeah, that's really good to hear. Yeah. And yeah, let's talk about uh, cafe science. So we uh, talk about cafe science before, but maybe our listener wondering what is cafe science, what it looks like. Can you tell our listener about cafe science and its programs? Yeah, definitely. Sorry, I have a little cold, so I might cough here a little bit, but yeah, it's okay. 
Um, so our cafe program was actually, it's a, it's a program that's all over the United States, but it was started mm -hmm. here in New Mexico. There's a woman, her name is Michelle Hall and she's mm -hmm. up at the Los Alamos national Labs. She's a geologist mm -hmm. and she's the one that thought she's like, you know, we need a program for our youth that gets mm -hmm. the youth together. It mm -hmm. empowers them to organize something. And, but also we bring in like an adult, like who's a scientist or some kind of interesting career field or someone that has something interesting to share or do with the students. And mm -hmm. so the cafe program reaches out to people within our community, adults usually, mm -hmm. um, that are in different professional fields, usually within the STEM fields, um, mm -hmm. because we have a rich STEM community here in um, New Mexico. And we invite mm -hmm. them to come in. And then mm -hmm. the students lead the program. They plan the food. So we actually have money to help buy food, mm -hmm. which is a huge attraction <laughs> for our students. They're like, food? You're going to serve food? <laughs> and so, and then the students help organize that. They go with me. We go shopping. We buy mm -hmm. the food. They see how much it costs. They have to budget for it. They have to learn mm -hmm. how to budget for the supplies and stuff because we only have a certain amount each month because we usually do one mm -hmm. cafe a month. Mm -hmm. And then they, we set, you know, we, the kids prepare flyers and I don't know, mm -hmm. did you ever make a flyer, Nikita? Did you do yes, a flyer? Yes, yes, yeah. The B, so, yeah. The B one. <laughs> awesome. Above so you the did bees, it the bees. yes. Perfect. Yeah. And so we make our kids take responsibility for creating a flyer that we put out into the community, informing the mm -hmm. community like, hey, we've got this cool guest speaker. They're going to come to the Indian school. They're going to be there for a couple hours. You can get food, mm -hmm. we'll feed you. You'll get to hear about what this person does. And then we do a hands-on activity mm -hmm. with the so mm -hmm. not only is it, it's not just a lecture, it's not just someone like blah, 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 talking mm -hmm. to the students, the, the person or the STEM professional leads mm -hmm. the students or guides the students in some kind of cool, fun activity. Mm -hmm. So um, my students, so the, the leaders, the teen leaders, mm -hmm. we call them teen leaders because mm -hmm. they are, um, they get to introduce the speaker they're the ones like when people come in, they take attendance, they're getting people's mm -hmm. names, emails, they'll plan um, an icebreaker too. So we want to like make sure people feel comfortable when they come to the cafe. So they plan mm -hmm. like a cool icebreaker activity. And then they tell, they lay down the law and say, hey, no mm -hmm. cell phones during this program. <laughs> Keep, you know, make sure you're not chatting with your neighbor, you know unnecessarily so they give them some like guidelines to follow so it's like mm -hmm. students the peers are telling their own peers what you know mm -hmm. what the behavior expectations are um and yeah and so they get to they're helping organize every step of the way so that's kind of my mm -hmm. job is just the, as the teen leader or adult leader excuse me adult leader mm -hmm. is to just support and help guide these teens um, mm -hmm. to show them how they could totally do this. They could run an, mm -hmm. a program and these mm -hmm. are the things you need to run it. And mm -hmm. I make them responsible for all aspects from the, the start when we go get the food to setting up, to welcoming the speaker, to cleaning up after net, after the cafe and making sure everything's mm -hmm. organized. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they're like life skills that these kids kids are learning. Yeah, they learn leadership skill and how do they feel? They feel really excited to go to sh shop and prepare those things. <laughs> they love it. They every time they're like, "When's the next cafe, Miss Sala?" They always are like <laughs> excited about when the next uh... cafe is, when they get to plan it, and because I'm at the school, you know, it mm -hmm. makes it easier for me to help organize because we do our, we do like meetings every week. So I meet with them at lunch on Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. And so we get together, we organize, we plan for the upcoming cafe. We talk about mm -hmm. we 
you know, we'll do practice icebreakers with each other. Mm -hmm. We'll, um, you know, make sure our supplies are all organized. Um, or if we need to order or get new supplies, mm -hmm. they're on top. They're the ones looking for that and stuff. Or they're the ones even running the cafe. So I've had kids mm -hmm. come up with their own idea and say, hey, could we do this as a cafe? And I'm like, uh, sounds awesome. So they run the cafe. They plan and organize it. And they're the speakers. They become the actual presenters of whoa. the cafe. Yeah. Wow, that sounds great that uh, the team leader not only can organize <laughs> the cafe, but they can also initiate what they want to do. Most yeah. definitely. Yeah. Yeah, and they, I've um, even had... Oh, sorry. I was going to say, I even had students, they'll have family or relatives that are in the STEM mm -hmm. field and they've invited mm -hmm. them to come in and speak. And so they've been the one organizing. Um, mm -hmm. And then one, I had one student, she did a workshop and networked mm -hmm. at the workshop with these mm -hmm. people um, in mm -hmm. Albuquerque and mm -hmm. they were nuclear scientists and mm -hmm. she was able to oh. invite them to come do a mm -hmm. nuclear cafe for mm -hmm. us. Um, so she organized, yeah. she emailed them, she communicated with them. I was like, yep, you do all the, mm -hmm. the communication with the, the people would, we'll just plan the date and then we'll mm -hmm. go from there. So it's really just trying to empower our students mm -hmm. that they can also reach out. It's not just me. They can reach mm -hmm. out and find people to come in and, and present. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They tend to be an initiator, innovator. So that's a great failure to be a leader and to be um, uh, the powerful youth. <laughs> and that's what um, you did, Nikita. That's totally what you did. Because <laughs> you were I was like, so, you know, during the pandemic, obviously we had to go virtual and mm -hmm. you developed the whole entire lesson. I mean, it was amazing to see your um work through the the globe um project and really utilizing um the mm -hmm. or just the nasa sorry not the globe but the nasa resources and using mm -hmm. the nasa resources to help develop um a cafe yeah and you ran it and it was wonderful so yeah i feel that i'm I am supported by you and yeah, I'm so happy to share a lot of things that I do because yeah, I'm supported by adult leader. That's why adult leader is important for a teen leader, right? Definitely. Yeah. I think that it's just and, to kind of, again, just boost your confidence, say like you can mm -hmm. do it, right? Mm -hmm. And yes. you, ha you, you walk away with a superpower, right? Now you have yes. these superpowers. Yes. I'm a superhero. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and talk about the cafe program. Do you, uh, do you have uh, any example of one of the cafe program that uh, you can share to our audience? Because maybe they want the real example of how it start and how the how we uh, how to prepare the cafe science until the preparation until the cafe program day can you uh, pick yeah. one example and tell to our audience yeah well I'll just use the current example so we actually yeah. have we're supposed to have a cafe last night mm -hmm. um it was going to be the B cafe with um Dr. Olivia Carroll but we had mm -hmm. to postpone it till next week because we had a conflict at the school uh last night there was another program happening so yeah, mm -hmm. basically um, we reach out, we either myself or the students mm -hmm. will email mm -hmm. or text, right? Or um, call the, um, the, the presenter and we mm -hmm. just say, hey, you know, are, would you be available? Um, if a person has never done it before, but Olivia Carroll has, so she was just like, sure, totally. Like, um, tell me the month. And usually we try to start way back in August. So in August, mm -hmm. I'm meeting with the teen leaders and we're saying, okay, what would we like to have as our cafe for October, for November, for December? Mm -hmm. And we reach out. I have the students and myself, we all reach out to the different um, speakers. And with Olivia, she was like, sure, I can come in April. 
So we were like, perfect. We have April booked um, Mm -hmm. this cafe. And usually if the person like Olivia, she's presented before, so she knows the format. So, you know, if the person is new, we would have to cut, we have some like um, forms and like Google docs that we Mm -hmm. share with them to say, this is the expectation of you as a guest speaker. We want you to show up at this time. Um, Mm -hmm. We might speak to you before. We might do a pre-interview. We might do a pre-cafe just to kind of vet them, just to see if they're like, they sound okay or if what they're saying is going to go like way over the head of our students. Um, And we try to be like, hey, we want to bring it down to the level of high school students so that they get inspired. Um, And then we encourage the speaker to, like Olivia, say, tell us about your background. Tell us about how you were as a high school student. Like, what were Mm. your dreams? What were your hopes? And so we try to encourage the speaker to kind of, you know, tell a story about their life Mm -hmm. uh, prior to doing what they were doing. Um, Mm -hmm. So, yeah, once we got the speaker lined up, then the students and I, we have a Mm -hmm. budget um, we have a budget of, uh, it's, I mean, it's quite a lot of money. We have $150 to spend mm-hmm. on food for the cafe. Um, mm-hmm. the kids decide they're like, oh, we want to have pizza or we want to have, um, Panda Express or something like that. Uh, Panda Express, it's like a food chain here that does like rice mm-hmm. and chicken and stuff. So the kids decide on the, the, the menu and then we decide on the mm-hmm. icebreaker we we divvy up the roles we say okay let's say olivia is going to be the introducer um cassidy is going to be the um person um uh greeting people and getting their information um zanzibar is going to um do the raffle we always hold a raffle mm-hmm. at the end of the cafe as well and we give away a gift card so not only mm-hmm. are the kids getting bed they get food we also Mm -hmm. wrap off a gift card to a local business usually the kids want starbucks i don't know if you guys have Starbucks, (laughs) (laughs) but it's a coffee shop it's like a coffee coffee Mm -hmm. store here in santa fe and they're like yeah let's get a gift card for starbucks um so they that's what they usually get so we we just decide okay who's doing what um, who's going to take pictures of the, you know, so we always upload mm-hmm. photos of the cafe so we can document it. Um, and so each kid has a role. Each kid knows what they're doing ahead of the cafe. And so mm-hmm. the day the cafe shows up, we go shopping mm-hmm. for the food right after school. And then mm-hmm. um, we set up and it, because it's on our campus, we set it all up inside this beautiful kind of mm-hmm. like common space room. And Mm -hmm. we set up signs outside because sometimes people come on our campus and they're like, where is everything? Mm -hmm. We try to lead them to um, where the cafe is. And so we greet the kids, greet the people, (laughs) excuse me, as they come in. Mm -hmm. And um, then the kids start, they do the icebreaker. Um, Mm -hmm. The kids are eating food um, Mm -hmm. at the beginning of the cafe. And then the presentation starts. And so we have the the guest mm-hmm. person. So like Miss Carol, mm-hmm. who's going to come in next week, Wednesday, she's going to talk mm-hmm. all about um, native bees or like insects mm-hmm. that are native mm-hmm. to New Mexico because she studied. That's what she studies. She studies these mm-hmm. bees and how they are really amazing pollinators. And so mm-hmm. she'll go into all like she does a really fun like it's like 30 five to 45 minutes she'll do a little presentation but throughout her presentation it's very engaging she asks kids questions she engages the audience (laughs) and then we do um like a hands-on activity so she'll have Mm -hmm. the kids build um a bee house for Uh native bees straws it's really cool so the kids are like building a little thing that they can take Mm -hmm. back to their house and put it outside where the, mm-hmm. the native bees could then make their nest in there. Um, so she tries to make the, the program. And so the program lasts about an hour and a half, right? Depending on um, 
how long it takes for the, the hands-on part of the program. And then at the end, the students wrap it up. They say, thank you. We, you know, we um, recognize the speaker. We actually mm -hmm. have um, a sponsor here in Santa Fe. It's called the Santa Fe Alliance for Science. And they mm -hmm. sponsor our guest speakers. They give them a little honorarium. So they give them like $50, you know. So if they're traveling from another place, it helps them pay for gas. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a little bit of money to, and then some of our guest speakers will just be like, nope, you don't need to give me. I don't want the, I'm doing this because I love it. It's just fun to do it. Um, but some of our guests will be like, oh, great. Thank you. I appreciate the, you know, appreciate the honorarium. Um and so we, you know, say thank you. And then the students, the teen leaders, basically break down all the food. We, mm -hmm. they usually send it off. They'll take the leftovers. Mm -hmm. So they can, if there's any food left over, they'll take mm -hmm. it back to their friends in the dorm or they'll eat it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> or, um, and then they clean up. So we all, we all kind of pitch in, we help clean up. We take all the stuff back to my classroom and they organize it. And, you know, they're, they're able to head off back to the dorms after we, we do all the cleanup, but, you know, it's really just teaching these kids how to run a program, mm -hmm. become leaders, be responsible, like show up, mm -hmm. like they show up, um, they have good, they learn public speaking sp skills because they have to introduce and... themselves. So we go around and everybody introduces themselves, um, mm -hmm. and it's, really great opportunity for kids to feel confident in mm -hmm. um, in themselves amongst their peers or yeah. other, other other peers from Santa Fe too because we invite the community so anyone's welcome it's not just our students it's open to the Santa Fe community yeah uh, so I don't know if that, if that helps if that's what you were asking I was just kind of trying to describe it in like as yeah. an example yeah yeah, of course, our <laughs> listener can get the visualization how to create a cafe science program because you explain from the beginning until the day and after the cafe science over, cafe science even over. Yeah, that's great. And I love to hear that the cafe science, um, oh, uh, the cafe science developed the team leader public speaking and mm -hmm. I feel that because yeah in in uh, my experience uh, I get the opportunity to speak even though I'm not a native speaker and yeah I go through the mistake and yeah I made it I can I um finally I'm able to speak and yeah that's uh, increased my confidence to talk even though I'm not a native speaker even though I'm still learning about English yeah that's very very um wonderful experience for me and what you have uh explained about cafe science also really detailed and yeah I'm pretty sure that our listener can also get the insight from your explanation um yeah oh. I have um <laughs> and I have a question. So in team leaders, they work in the team. And uh, what are the important aspects do you think that we uh, that we need to consider to achieve a successful uh, event? Yeah, so like I said, I think teens like showing up, like I said, we have these weekly meetings. I mean, mm -hmm. it might be different for another organization. They might only meet once a month or twice a month. It depends mm -hmm. um, on the organization or who's leading the ca the teen program. Um, but mm -hmm. I meet them every week. That way it's, it's a way to check in and mm -hmm. um, hold them accountable, like make sure that there's some accountability and a voice, right? We want the students to have a voice in the program mm -hmm. and, and have the choices. So they want to be able to have mm -hmm. choices. And I just am there like recording all kind of like organize and, mm -hmm. um, you know, organize the meetings, but I'm just jotting down all their uh, ideas and choices and who's doing what and stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. I haven't quite got around to someone being a secretary and doing that. Um, 
mm -hmm. uh, for me, but that's another role that could be um, um, created in the teen leader program. And there, I was just going to say to all the listeners too, if anyone wants any of this information, like I have a whole file from um, Michelle Hall, who's created this program that breaks it down. It says, these are the responsibilities of the teen leaders, right? These are the roles. These are the jobs. So it's all spelled out in documents. So if any of your listeners ever want any of that stuff, I'm happy to share and email it um, and forward that information to them. Cause it's not, it's not private information. We want to share. We want, we want cafe programs to be all over the world. We want kids to be inspired to, mm -hmm. uh, to those STEM fields to, to feel like they can, can do what these people have done or, or forge their own path. Um, and just feel like they are smart enough they they have the confidence to be able to, um, fill these roles that are highly needed, especially in the STEM mm -hmm. fields. Yeah, that's a great thing. And uh, have you experienced the challenge uh, during the process of uh, running Cafe Science? Yeah, I think the, the biggest challenge is just um, how we communicate, you know, to encourage other people outside of the Indian school to join us. I mean, I think that's been the biggest challenge is like, how do we get other youth I mean we know that you joined us through zoom and stuff and that was like like a good platform mm -hmm. <clears throat> but how do we get kids to physically show up that <clears throat> aren't just from our school um to come to our cafes um and I've you know and that part for me is is kind of like ebbed and flowed um mm -hmm. Cause I have my own two kids. So I was able to utilize their teachers and I'd be like, Hey, share this with your students, share this with your mm -hmm. kiddos um, at the other school. So that's just been my biggest challenge is I, I really want more community members to, to join these cafes. Um, Cause some cafes will just get like 10 kids mm -hmm. that'll show up. And some cafes we've had up to 50 people uh. show up. So it's like, it's it really varies um according to the topic and then also the um just the what you know that particular night if kids are available or not if they don't have other activities and stuff if they're not doing sports or they don't have other commitments and stuff so i think that's the biggest challenge is our kids especially here in the united states are very mm -hmm. booked. They have a lot of stuff going on after school, before school, during school. And so to try to get them to come to another program, um, that's sometimes a, a, a challenge, but, you know, we always have kids, no matter, even if it's our own leaders that just show up, right. We mm -hmm. still run the program. We still have the cafe, even if no other kids show up. Cause I have like 10 teen leaders that are consistently coming and, and helping out at the cafes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think that's a big challenge just trying to get um, other youth um, to come and to show up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's uh, something that insightful. <laughs> and me. I have um, two more questions. One or yes. two. So, um, <laughs> yes. Um, I think Cafe Science is really, really great uh, program and you have a long journey uh, to run and interact with the kid, with the teen leader. And from uh, those programs and from those experiences, what is the meaningful value that you get from the Cafe Science program? And what do you want to encourage uh, for the team leaders in your cafe science? Yeah, I think, you know, one of the, you know, even from your experience, you know, we mm -hmm. were just chatting before we started the podcast that you mm -hmm. still are in contact with um, one of our, our, our team leaders when it was mm -hmm. over COVID and um, the connections that kids make, the friendships mm -hmm. that kids form, when they're doing the program, 
I think mm -hmm. is an amazing part of the experience. I think, you know, cause a lot of kids that sometimes are interested in science, you know, some, they, they struggle maybe having relationships with other types of kids, but the mm -hmm. cafe program really allows kids to form, you know, good friendships, lasting friendships, um, meaningful mm -hmm. friendships um, when they come and they're always interacting and planning with those um, kids. And then they form relationships with me as the leader and I get to see them, you know, blossom when they go off to college or whatever career that they decide to do, you know, they mm -hmm. always, you know, will email me and say, you know, check in and say, hey, Masala, how are you doing? Um, you know, I'm doing this program. So it's just like they get to tell me the other um, activities that um, they're able to do because they've built up this confidence um, in themselves that they from, you know, by doing the cafe and by being mm -hmm. a leader, by being able to stand up in front of a group of people that they may not know, or they may, you know, may know, but develop those, those skills, those leadership skills. Um, and, and just to be more also empathetic too, like they're empathetic toward like, oh, wow, it takes, it takes a lot to, to, mm -hmm. to create a program and to run it and, they see, they see like, wow, you got to go get all the food. You got to do all this. You got to plan. And so they see the steps that are taken and the planning um, that has to go into a program like that. Um, so it helps them, you know, later on in their lives, like, you know, things aren't always easy, but if you work together, if you plan ahead, right, you can have, be a very successful person um, and be, and be successful in any part of your, your life. Um, so I think those are kind of those strengths that our kids take away. Like they take away, um, you know, empathy, they take away, um, those, the leadership skills, the comp, they develop confidence. Um, mm -hmm. they, um, yeah, I, I, I'm, you know, there's a million different, uh, skills that they develop, but, um, those are some of the main ones that I feel like kids walk away with and they come away with a love of like learning science, like science and math can be fun. Like they can actually mm -hmm. have fun learning them because it's not a classroom setting. And they're mm -hmm. like, wow, you know, I get to learn something totally new or, or learn a new skill that I never would have learned or, or heard about um, mm -hmm. in the, in a classroom setting. So it just opens their eyes up to, to a bigger world, right? Um, so mm, that they yes. become more globally minded, especially, right, if it's, if it's mm -hmm. an issue that's dealing with climate change or, you know, anything dealing with um, sustainability or creating a more mm -hmm. sustainable planet. Um, and so, you know, I think those are things that they, they uh, take away from that and just being feeling empowered. Yeah, that's really, really great explanation. Yeah, I feel that friendship is really important to uh, make something different or we as a kind of change really need friendship or connection to make something that we want being successful. And yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. that's really makes sense for me. And yeah, that's really uh, wonderful. And I want to share with my audience that um, Kokamuhi actually, uh, uh, the community that raised the awareness about urban heat island and i discovered or the urban heat island event when i learned about the nasa story map so mm -hmm. um yeah in the cafe science there is uh um miss Desiree uh, that uh explained and shared about a nasa map story uh, yeah something like that and yeah their explanation about garbage patch and also uh, the urban heat island and I aware that uh, that uh, phenomenon that phenomenon is stressful in my hometown and yeah we got a lot of um uh, like heat stress and yeah I have like I have um decreasing of the quality of sleep because of that 
yeah, in cafe science, we not only talk about the theoretical thing, but we talk about the real, real problem that we face globally, and it's really urgent. So I really a gratitude. I feel gratitude that I can join and experience a lot of things in cafe science, and that's built my empathetic uh empathetic spirit toward the nature toward our earth and also toward the human being and that's a nice thing that um you provide to me <laughs> as an adult leader in cafe science misala <laughs> yeah um, no yeah it was wonderful to to hear your your whole project about the because a lot of our students you know we don't Mm -hmm. They don't live in urban areas. They live in very rural mm -hmm. areas. And mm -hmm. so to learn about your community and to learn about the problems your community is facing, like the urban heat islands, you know, was a real eye opener for them um, because they're like, wow. And even when you, you know, you took our kids on a tour of your village too, when you went home, you were able to show us like your grandmother's mm -hmm. um, home and you welcomed us into your home virtually, you know, virtually. Um, so I think those connections that you can create, because, you know, we we can't do things by ourselves. We need to have mm -hmm. a community. We need to work together. And yes. we need to realize it takes many, many people to make things mm -hmm. happen. Um, so I think, you know, your um, idea of the friendships and, and um, not being alone and, and, having community will really help our planet heal and if we can mm -hmm. just work together that's and and empathize yes. and understand the problems that are in different locations because they're not all the same um but really empathize with each other's um community issues yeah yeah, that's true that, yeah, friendship and connection is our power. <laughs> we cannot live together. <laughs> That's why we are together. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. After yeah. how many years, right? Just even though we've yeah. never met each other in person, we still yeah. have this connection, right? Yeah. And we come to the end of our uh, podcast session. And my last question is, do you have any advice for, do you have any advice for our audience who want to start bringing up their leadership skills? I think the biggest thing is just to be supportive, to listen mm -hmm. to the needs of the youth, to like be mm -hmm. open to their ideas, to be mm -hmm. open to, to just like us as adults, to just mm -hmm. show up and to be supportive. Because um, mm -hmm. I think, especially for our students in our community, mm -hmm. so many times adults in their lives disappoint them or they don't show up or they mm -hmm. don't, you know, do what they're going to say they're going to do. Um, mm -hmm. So if we can just be committed mm -hmm. and be supportive of their ideas and show up, um, I think, you know, that goes a huge way for kids. They see that. They see the, the, that the adults in their lives are being adults. They're showing up and they're saying what they're going to do and they are committed Um to to the to the youth um mm -hmm. and so i think that's what's really important for those listeners out there that are you know thinking about like how can i support youth um what can i do it's just just listen listen and then show up for when they ask for help mm -hmm. if they say hey, can you help me with this or i might i have this idea um can you help me with that and if you can be supportive and listening, I think that is like one of the biggest um, important, you know, qualities of a leader, right, is to listen to other yes. people to help them. Yeah, because helping, I mean, that's what, um, you know, hopefully will help like heal our world. We have to help each other. We have to be willing to set aside our differences, to set aside our, our arguments mm -hmm. and be like, hey, how can we help each other to do better? Yeah, so the key is being supportive and also uh, listen to the others. Yeah, that's a that is the important value that we need in our spirit. <laughs> yes. So yeah, thank you, thank you, Misala, for all of the 
positive energy you shared with us through your explanation about cafe science and how to build a leadership and also you um provide us with the real example to how to run cafe science and how to how to be more empathetic how to be more supportive with other and i'm pretty sure that um our listener are happy to hear about that about this because yeah what we told about is about positive energy that we shared and we will get after that yeah thank exactly. you thank you so much misala for today conversation anytime anytime yeah and also i want to thank our listeners for uh, joining us and yeah stay tuned with our more and more our episode hopefully it helps you a lot and yeah i i can wait for the next episode and got a new um insightful thing and knowledge hopefully we can do this together misala in yeah the other time with the other topic misala <laughs> because exactly. yeah i'm really happy to talk with you excellent yeah, hey that's... we're matching too right we got our yeah, matching yeah, shirt we're matching. <laughs> Our yeah, matching, matching shirt. Oh, I can't. Here, I gotta hold it. Science. science. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, science. <laughs> <my> science. <laughs> there you go. And that was designed by a student, right? Jade. Yeah. Jade designed this. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing, right? Mm -hmm. We support our, mm -hmm. our artists. We support yeah, the artists. support our artists and support each other because um everyone is unique. Everyone has their own power. <laughs> exactly. Yay, superpowers. Yeah. Yeah, so it's the end of our podcast. So before we close this podcast, so let's do Salam Superhero Misala. So I count one, two, three. I say Salam and we say sal Superhero together. Are you ready, Misala? I am okay. ready. So <laughs> one, so let's count one, two, three. Salam Superhero. Superhero. <laughs> So thank you so much, Misala. And thank you for our listeners who are so much superhero. Bye-bye. Hey, superheroes. All of you are superheroes. Thank you. Yay. <laughs>